I'll be, I want to say thank you. I want to say Torah Ba for allowing us to gather on this platform for another Shabbat day, another Shabbat study. And I'll be, I ask that you can give us the strength to call your such Shabbat a delight, regardless of the things that we may be facing in our life. And I'll be, I ask that we will not be distracted as we go into your word, but ask that you can give us the strength to have full attention of your word. And I'll be, I ask as we study your word, I ask that we will not just be hearers of your word, but ask that we will be doers also. And I'll be, I ask that you give us the strength to overcome any temptation, anything that may be contrary to you. I'll be asked that you can cleanse our thoughts, I ask that you can forgive us for our sins and also forgive us our ancestors for their sins. And I'll be, I want to say Torah about for your Torah, Torah about for your mercy and, that your, and your love that you have towards us. And I'll be I ask that you can continue to circumcise our heart, our lead, cause us to love you and also to love our brothers and sisters. And I'll be I ask that hatred will not be in our heart, but I ask that if we do hate anything, I ask that we will hate evil and all manner of sin, but I ask that we will love you and love your word and we'll also love your creations, those who we labor with and those who we dwell with on this earth. And I'll be I ask on this day that you can hear the prayers that are sent forth and I ask that you can answer them if it be your will. And I ask that you could touch the hearts of every brother and sister on this call, and the ones that are not on this call, those across the four countries of the earth, those who are seeking the truth. And I ask that you could give them the, the desires of their heart as they seek you. Bless you are Yahweh, blesses your name, Yahweh, bless he that comes in the name of Yahweh. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. All right, Mr. Bakar, give all praise on this thing to the Most High. Uh, open the door up for a few uh, praise reports, the testimonies. If anybody have any uh, praise report they would like to give to the Most High before we start the lesson, I'm going to open the floor for a few people that may want to give the Most High some praise. Yes, ma'am, Ima. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. As always, I, I want to give Abba all praise and all esteem for watching over us, blessing, protecting us, and keeping us safe from hurt, harm, and danger, and for allowing us to enter into another Shabbat. I am speaking to you from Texas right now, and I just praise Abba that he brought us here safely. It's, it's been a while since I've flown, but I thank him for bringing us here safely. But I especially thank him because last night my son and daughter told me, you know, well, you know, I'm not going to the graduation, which is tomorrow at uh, 1.30. They understand that I can't go. However, today they had a marching ceremony where the seniors marched in their cap and gown from their school to the elementary school where it all started. So I got to see my grandson marching his cap and gown and that was this morning and we went back at 11.30 to an award ceremony where he received an award. And I just thank Abba for that because he knew where my heart was, what have you. And he allowed me to see my grandson march and I didn't have to do it on Shabbat. So I just say, glory, hallelujah. Oh, praise all, praise all, praise all. Praise be to the most uh, for safe travel and for uh, the blessing of you still being able to see him march. And it's not being on Shabbat. So all praise be to the most high. Hallelujah. Well, all right. Uh, Adon Shah, the floor is yours. Ken, I just want to give all praise to the most high Yah, you know, for you know his mercy, you know, the gift of life. I also want to give him praise, you know, for, um, for patience, uh, patience and wisdom. Because when I when I look back on certain situations in my life, um, certain things I was concerned about, worried about, you know, in the end, you know, it, it worked out, you know, worked out for my good. Also, I think about, you know, I put, you know, time, um, time stamps on things. You know, I'm gonna have this done by this time, but this year I'm gonna be doing this. And for the most I know, during certain situations, he taught me patience, you know, everything doesn't have to be done, you know, at once. Um, so I give all praise to the most I you know, for, you know, giving me the wisdom to, you know, to see how patience works, you know. I'll praise to the most high. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise, honesty, me to the most high. Uh, Ema Rose, I believe you're trying to speak. The floor is yours. Yeah. Shabbat Shalom. 
I first want to give honor to the Most High God. Yeah. I just want to say thank you because I had a chance to come on tonight. I missed last Friday and I felt so bad. I felt real guilty, but I thank him for restoring, you know, restoring me and let me know that I don't have to feel condemned because I'm still learning. I'm still walking and trying to serve him the best in my ability towards him. And I just thank uh, y'all for being on Shabbat tonight. And I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise on and to the Most High. Uh, all praise at the Most High. May able for you to be on tonight, Ima. Praise the Most High. All right, Mishmukha, I give all honesty to the Most High. Um, I'm going to do a quick recap on where we was at last week, and we was focusing in the book of Bereshit or Genesis, and we were reading and referencing, um, focusing on Enoch, whose name was actually Kanach, which is dedicated. So he was one that was totally dedicated to the Most High, and it was said that Enoch walked with Elohim, and we also covered Noah, commonly called Noah, and it was saying that Noah walked with Elohim. And so we were seeing that in the very beginning, walking with Elohim, and they were totally dedicated. They had total faith in the Most High. And whatever the Most High commanded them, whatever instructions he gave them, they followed and they walked in righteousness while the rest of the world around them could have been extremely wicked. We've also looked at that only Noah and his family were the ones that were um, actually in building the ark and actually going to enter the ark and how the most I got frustrated or definitely vexed with man because he said man was, mind was set continually on doing evil, um, always and continually. So therefore he got frustrated and he said he was just gonna destroy all mankind because man was just so consumed with sin. We also covered the reason why Noah um, was saved during that time period when everybody else was uh, killed was because he walked with Elohim and he found favor in the sight of the Most High. And that word there for favor was going to be ken, which actually means favor, which you can translate as grace. But it's the fact that the Most High favored him because of what he was doing, because he was righteous. So the Most High had favor towards him. He liked him. He loved him. He knew he was one that was seeking him. So therefore, we covered that grace is not a new concept that comes in the New Testament writings. Grace was in the very beginning in the book of Genesis. If we translate from the original language and have the understanding of what's actually written right before our eyes. So grace already existed in the very beginning. The Most High was gracious or, and, or favorable to Noah. Um, and he was favorable to him because he was the one walking in righteousness. So we also was just wanting to paint the picture for us to all understand that no offense to what we might've learned prior to what we're learning now, but Things have been taught to us in error. So we were living in a world where we're taught that grace is doing pretty much what you want to do. And you cover it by grace and you cover it by the blood and you shall be saved as long as you believe in the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. But according to the text, it says something different than what we've been taught. So if we believe and obey, then we should be saved. If we believe and we're walking in, walking with y'all, walking in y'all, then y'all will have favor and be gracious unto us. But if we're not trying to serve him, then that favor, that grace does not apply to someone that knows that they're in sin, but refuses to repent from sin and refuses to do things the most highest way. That is a false faith. That is a false uh, comfort of grace that the world is under today, living however they want to live contrary to his will, thinking that they're covered by grace. When the scriptures actually show us that grace or favor that Noah had with the most high was because he was walking righteously and walking with the most high. So we'll be picking up uh, today, or tonight rather, um, in very sheet chapter uh, seven, commonly called Genesis, very sheet of Genesis chapter seven. Knock down if you can take that one from the top for me. Bereshit for Genesis chapter 7. And y'all said unto Noah, Come you and all your house into the ark, for you have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast you shall take to you by sevens, 
the male and the female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and the female, of the fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that Yah commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean and of fowls and of everything that creep upon the earth. And they went in two and two unto the unto Noah and the ark, the male and the female, as Elohim commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. In the selfsame day, entered Noah, Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as Elohim had commanded them, and Yah sh had shut them in, shut him in. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail. And the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both the fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life. Of all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven and they were destroyed from the earth and Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark and the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days all right hallelujah so uh just want to go back to the, verse one and y'all said unto Noah come you and your house into the ark for you have I seen and the word that for seen is going to be rea, which is to see. So he see him. You have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So just building from the point that we was going into last night, um, and what I've been not even not last night, got last Shabbat, and what I said at the beginning of the study, pretty much the book of Genesis is a very powerful read because pretty much everything that we really need to know is already written in Genesis either the, the sinful nature of man or the righteous nature of man, man either sinning or man either serving Yah. It's all written in Genesis and it's given us an example and a picture and a pattern of salvation. So if we already look back, it said Noah walked with Elohim, Enoch walked with Elohim. So we know that when we covered last week and last week's reading that Enoch did not die a natural death like others. Enoch was transcended or brought up into the Shemayim to the Most High because he was so righteous and he walked with the Most High. But again, it gives us the pattern that while other mankind was wicked, Enoch was righteous. He walked with Elohim. That's the reason why the Most High brought him up. Now the Most High is frustrated or vexed. I ain't gonna say frustrated. He's vexed with mankind because man has got extremely wicked. Everyone's leaning to their own understanding, living however they want to live, full of sin doing everything except for the way that Yah commands. So now he's going to destroy all flesh with the exception of Noah and his family, because it said that Noah 
found favor in the sight of Yah, and it says that Noah walked with Elohim. In this chapter, we see that it came out that Yah said to him, because I've seen your righteousness. This is giving us a pattern of how to walk out our salvation. Salvation is not something that's given to someone that is not trying to walk it out. We can see right here in the very beginning of the book, salvation. Enoch had salvation. Noah and his family received salvation when everybody else was destroyed. And salvation came to these that we've read about already based upon their righteousness of walking with Elohim. So if we want to try to make our election sure, if we want the most high to warn us of the flood or fire or storm or tempest or plagues to come, protect us and to deliver us, then we have to be walking with Elohim. And it says, because I've seen your righteousness before me, that is the reason why I'm bringing you into the, into the ark. That is the reason why I'm delivering or saving you. So now if anyone wants to think walking with Yah is anything other than being righteous, the word just came back and edified itself. Walking with Yah is not just saying I believe in him, but if you say don't do this, Father, then I'm still going to do what I want to do, but I believe in you and I'm under grace. No, he was under grace because he walked with Yah. He was righteous before Yah. And Yah said, because I've seen your righteousness, this is the reason why I saved you in another, in, 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 uh, in, if you actually read it, what, what's being said. That's why I brought you into the ark. And we know the ark is the only people that was on the ark was Noah and his family. They were saved. So we see salvation and the pattern to getting salvation written right here in Genesis. And it's all about the love of Yah, walking with Yah, the righteousness of doing whatever Yah commands. And as we covered last week also, but we have to have faith in Yah because it says in Hebrews, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So when he told Noah to build that ark, and even though the flood did not come until 120 years later, and even though it could not have been storms or hurricanes, and Noah built the ark because the Most High told him to, all right? So onto the ark, we know, of course, I'm going to breeze through this now. It says, of every clean beast, thou should take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. So I'm going to pause it for a second. Uh, will somebody tell me how many animals were taken on to the, to the ark? Not a total account, but just according to what you're reading here now, the way they were brought on, how many clean animals were brought, how many unclean animals were brought? Somebody help me out. Was it 14? All right. How we get 14, Ima? 14 what? Okay. There were seven clean, two males and two females. And then it was two of each of the unclean male and female. Okay, so so here's something that a lot of us may not see. So when we look at it, we think it was seven clean, two unclean, but it said by pairs. So if you take on a pair, a male and a female, and you have seven male and you have seven female, then that's gonna be pairs. You have 14, you have 14 clean animals. You have uh, also, uh, uh, two unclean animals by pair, so you have four of the unclean. We're going to go into this animals in, in just a moment, but I just want you to see here that from the very beginning, the Most High had already had, without us reading anywhere. So there are some things that we don't read directly off the page because there was conversation that the Most High had with mankind, and we don't have every conversation written in Scripture, okay? So what we know is that here, he told Noah what to take onto the ark, but we don't see written when he told Noah what was the clean and what was the unclean animals. But if we use common sense and we use reading comprehension, there is a dietary law that tells us what animals are clean, what animals are unclean. And we can see that from the very beginning of the text or the very beginning of the Bible that Noah already knew what these were. So they had to be taught. The laws already had to be taught. Saw so, Johanna, yes, sir. I see your hand up. Canada Downs, you know, it just it's just hit me about the um unclean animals and the clean animals. So he had Noah bring more clean animals than unclean animals. So why was that, right? We know that you're here about the dietary law tell 
back into Leviticus, back when the, the Israelites was back in Egypt. But like you said, Noah was one of the righteous, like the Most High said, he was perfect in his time. Like he knew the Most High. So what would Noah and his family was eating on the ark? He, he didn't say bring some plants on the ark and earth. So that letting you know that these clean animals that they had was probably making also and they was eating on the ark while they was out, the, out in that water for a while. But see, when the Israelites was in Egypt, you know, Egypt worshiped many gods and they were never following the our Elohim. So that's why we can see that when he put that daughter law for the Israelite that he had to do for Noah, because Noah knew the Most High. He's, you know, he's taught to the Most High, spent time with the Most High, so he already knew, even though they don't explain it more than that Torah like that, but he knew what to eat and what not to eat. And I yield on that though. Ima Audrey? I apologize. The answer that I gave was in response, would have been in response to what he was just not saying. The 14 would have been for food and for sacrifices. I'm sorry. So the total I gave for the 14 was just for the clean animals. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to build our discussion from tonight. So, why, uh, so as you were saying, Ima, you already given the answer. And as Johanna was given his answer, or, or he asked the question, why in the very beginning of the text does it say take seven clean, two unclean by pairs? And also, even though we don't see where he was taught <clears throat> which animals were clean and unclean, we know that he was taught. So he did know. So the most highs clean and unclean animals, even before a dietary law being given to the Israelites, because there was not even an Israelite at this time, because Israel was not even in existence. This was just man being in existence and an Israelite wasn't even born yet. So there was still a known fact that they knew the difference between clean and unclean animals. And when Noah took these animals onto the ark, just want a, a, a little slight uh, 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 adjustment of what uh, Sarah Johanna said, he did take veg vegetables and other things on also because the Most High told him to take food on for him and the animals. So he did take the vegetation and certain food and stuff on so that the animals could eat, so that they could eat. But there's still a very significant purpose behind these seven clean and these two unclean. Everything, so I want us to hear this now because we're gonna be going someplace later. Everything that the Most High has ever created has a function or a purpose. Everything is not to be purposed for food. Everything may not be purposed to be for a certain work, but it is for something, okay? So commonly today, people wanna to make it where you can eat everything and that, uh, that in the New Testament is saying you can eat whatever you want to. But as we go through the scripts tonight, we're gonna to find out that that's just not true. If you read with reading comprehension, they knew the difference between clean and unclean. Why would it be seven clean and two unclean? And Ema said, because the, you needed to have more clean because some of that was gonna be for food and some of that was gonna be for sacrifices. So when we go to the law of sacrifices, what we will find in the text is you cannot offer anything unclean to the Most High, nor can you eat anything unclean yourself. It defiles your temple. So already just in Genesis, we can see this here. Now, before we go, uh, we're gonna move to the eighth chapter in just a moment, but I just want to highlight that and we're gonna be going more into the animals at some other point. But uh, that was good bring out Iman Yohanan. A very good point. And these are the things that when we read, we want to be, when y'all hear me make the statement, when you're reading the text, see what's not written there. Not meaning you add something, but when you're reading the text and you're comprehending what's being said, what's not written here that supports scripturally someplace else for you to be able to understand, oh, now I understand we never were supposed to eat unclean foods because from the beginning of the text, before he told people what not to eat, written down, they already knew. And the proof of that is, as we go through the scriptures, you're going to see what Noah did when he came off the ark in the next chapter. But I want to bring out um, um, another thing real quick. So this chapter, because we've covered it already. So the Most High 
in verse 21 is one that I want to uh, highlight. So as we read, it said the water was going to be so high, it's going to be higher than some of the highest mountains and everything that lives on land, man and beast was going to be destroyed. There's a reason why even the beast was going to have to be destroyed because there was things that when we go into some of the historical writings, things that the man was doing with beast. And if you actually look at what's going on in the world today, the intermixing and the interbreeding of different species and man trying to create different animal types, that was not supposed to happen. And they was doing that type thing even way in the beginning. So the most high wiped out everything because man has defiled everything. All right. But what I want to focus on is verse 21. It says, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both foul and every, uh, every, uh, all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in dry land died. So just want to say, remember when it said Adam and Eve was created, it said the most high breathed into them, the breath of life. Um, so we see it here, the most high saying, the very life that I've given man, the very breath that I've given them, I'm taking that from them. And you know that once um, water uh, consumes us or we are submerged in water, there's only a certain amount of time that a man or woman can stay underwater. And so then if you're not able to breathe in any more air, then of course you're going to lose that breath of life. So the way the most high destroyed wickedness at this time and he washed the cleansed the earth was with a flood. And he destroyed all whom he gave the breath of life to, which was a gift from the most high, was to ever even be born. So he took the breath of life back. But again, focusing on the salvation, the only ones that were saved at this time was Noah and his household because Noah was righteous. Noah walked with Elohim, and for that reason, Noah found favor in the sight of Elohim. So the Most High gave Noah warning on to prepare to build the ark. There's a flood coming. Here's what you take on the ark, and make sure you take enough food to sustain you and the animals for a while, okay? Now let's go forward, Kanakia, uh, chapter 8. Bereshith, Genesis, chapter 8. And Elohim remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And Elohim made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated and the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountain seen. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark, which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth, from off the earth. And he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned into, into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in, unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark and the dove came into him in the evening and lo and her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off so Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth and he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth the dove which returned not again until many more and it came to pass in the 601st year in the first month the first day of the month the waters were dried up from off the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month on the seventh and 20th day of the month was the earth dried. And Elim spake unto Noah saying, 
Go forth of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring forth with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. That they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. And every beast, every creeping thing and every fowl and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto Yah and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And Yah spilled a sweet savor. And Yah said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I've done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. All right, hallelujah. So I want to talk about this uh, chapter a little differently because I know that everyone on this call knows Genesis chapter 8. I know we've all done read it several times. We know what it says, probably front and back. But I want us to discuss the chapter tonight. So will someone share with me what the Ruach is sharing with you from what you get from Genesis chapter 8? And I'll, I'll take a few answers. I don't, I don't want to ask it in a certain way. So I just, just want just to put it into a, don't just say what's happening, but explain it, like see it, feel it. This Genesis chapter eight in real time. Yes, Zamiri. Okay, Okay, you jump right to building an altar for the Most High. That's still a good point, but I want us to talk about everything before we get to that altar. Shah Shamar, what you got? But that's good, sweetie. Ken, I was going to talk about, you know, him, you know, building an altar for the Most High, but I was going to talk about it in the sense of, you know, the Most High, you know, he preserved his life, you know, he preserved the life of his family, you know, gave him substance. And the first thing that he thought, you know, to give something back to the Most High after the Most High gave to him. I always found that interesting. And another thing I thought about, you know, the last, well, the few, the last few precepts was talking about, you know, the seed is the seasons will not cease. I always thought that was interesting as well. By you. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else? Okay. So I know we all read it, and those are good points that both Shy pulled out and my bot or my daughter pulled out. But now I'm going to ask another question, and then maybe y'all can talk about it. Somebody to talk to. How long was they on the ark? You don't have to be exact, but how long was they on the ark? That's one answer. And I'm not looking for exact math. So just have a conversation. Like y'all know, we have conversation where we when we converse. We don't always have numbers exactly right. So I'm not looking for the exact number of days. But talk to me about this process of being on this arc. How was it? What'd you say, Zah? No, say, say what you said at the beginning. It sound what? So my bot said, sound depressing. They had no light. See, it sounds depressing. They had no light. <laughs> they were boarded in and they had no light. So that's what I'm saying. What is the Ruach telling us? Because I'm going somewhere with this in a moment. So she said it sounds depressing. That's a that's an honest answer. Appreciate that. Emi Rose, I see your mic came unmuted. You, you have something you want to share? Um, you said uh, I think about 40 days is they that it came to be at the end of 40 days, no open the window. So there was there, there at least, I think maybe about 40, maybe 80 days. That was that was a good answer also, Iman, because it just said 40 days. And mm -hmm. my son said 40 days also. But 40 days was only the days when he opened up to start seeing what's going on. He done been on there for hundreds of days. He's done been on there for months. But we're talking about it. That's still right. So 40 days is there. Okay. Gadol, Akoti, Angelisa. And, and remember, I'm just, I'm not uh, saying anybody's wrong because you're saying what you see in the text. But I want this visual to come 
to light for us tonight. Uh, the Dollar Coaching Angelisa. They were on there almost a a year, I want to say, and I, I'm I don't have my script in front of me, but um, I know for me, I like to go the sun shining outside running. They was in there with some animals that was stinking, probably giving birth because animals give birth a lot quicker than hum than females do than women do. Um, I'm sure there was poop everywhere, and it was dark, and it had to be very interesting. And I'm just not, yeah. Father knew. <laughs> That's all I can say. Okay, let's talk about it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on your comment in just a moment, Ima Nuker. Okay, I was about to be there with her. Um, yeah, I would say it's over 150 days, and that's a long time to be cooped up in a dark place. And um, like I said, he was on there with animals and stuff. And, but even though he was with family, it made a little different because it was family. They weren't on there with strangers. But some families, uh, I'm thinking about family encouraging each other that this one will be over because of all. Uh, uh, because they know what uh, the Most High had told them that he's going to take them on the army and they're going to save them. And so that I think they encourage each other while they're on the army. Okay. Hallelujah. So that's all I want to have a little discussion. So they were on the ark for months, close to a year, with all these animals, seven clean, also the unclean. They have to use the restroom. The animals have to use the restroom. There's going to be some work involved in trying to keep it somewhat decent while we're on here. I'm pretty sure they were going to be trying to clean some stuff and so it won't all be in just a certain area. We weren't on that ark, but we, I, look, I had pets. And I know how much it takes to keep a pet. And if anyone has an indoor pet and they have an accident in your home, you know about it soon because you smell it and you can't live with that mess. You have to get up and clean it up immediately. They're on here with all these animals. They don't know what's going on outside. Now, can you imagine a ride of being on an ark when it's storming and the earth is being flooded? Do you think that was a fun ride? Do you think they had a little fear, even though they were still trusted in the Most High? But do you think they had a little fear with the with that ride? Yes. Not knowing when it was going to end. So where am I going with this vivid picture that I wanted to see? See, we got to really start getting in tune with the text. If we see what they went through, we will learn not to give up on Yah so soon. Deliverance even when you're righteous, sometimes it does not feel good. My daughter said, it sounds depressing. Could you imagine me locked in there with all the animals trying to survive in the dark? Not knowing when it's going to be over. Possibly losing count of days and if you ain't scribing it down. So salvation is also work because you have to have faith even when you're going through your saving process. When the Most High delivers us, sometimes it's not going to be comfortable. And we covered this already about Passover also. The Most High has been showing us to wait patiently on him. Understand that I'm bringing you through something, but I'm still with you. Just do what I ask you to do and don't lose your faith in me. They was on that ark for months and months. And even when they thought the storm was over, as Ema said, 40 days. So some people think it was only on the ark for 40 days. No, that's just 40 days of opening the window to send out the raven to go try to find someplace so we can get off the ark. The dollar coach, Angelisa, I seen your hand up. Yes, sir. Moray, um, mm -hmm. as you were talking and um, Ema and I, we were talking about being on the ship and it being dark. And I started thinking about the slaves who were on the ship packed in like animals um, in tight quarters and it was dark and filth and, and fecal matter and all kind of stuff. And so that's that's all I was bringing out. So I can only imagine at least with Moshe and them, they had a little more movement, but you know, still the same concept. Yes. 
being yeah. trapped on a ship and on a on on something you know on a on a entity and then you don't have the ability to go move or do and not sure if you're gonna survive or not that's all it just made me think about that hallelujah told i told i eli audrey the floor is yours i just wanted to say that um during one of the hurricanes one time we boarded up all of the windows and we never did it again because once you board up the windows you don't know what's going on outside you can hear but you cannot see what's going on. And even though we weren't moving like the art was, we could hear things and we couldn't see anything. We had a uh, light, so that was a plus whatever. But that fear set in because of the unknown, because of the, what we could not see. So we could only imagine what was going on outside. Told off for that vivid picture, Iman. Told her for bringing that picture all of the light. So, Mr. Bakar, or oh, before I go, sorry, Johanna, I see your hand up. Yes, sir, sorry. So, it was interesting about the unclean animals. So, I had to discuss this a few times with a few of my uh, co workers about the purpose of the unclean animals. And, um, you know, back then you do the history, there was no such thing as a bathroom, a toilet, anything. So what was, how did you dispose in, you know, the stuff that you that we, we do now using toilets? So my experience in the military, so, you know, before I came to walk, I started eating pork when I was like 16 years old. But I still eat shrimp and all the other, other stuff, but I wasn't eating eat pork, I started eating at 16 years old. You know, um, my big brother became a Muslim. I kind of looked up to him and followed him, something about that, but uh, other clean pork. So one day, my ship pulled in Djibouti, Africa, right? So they still followed the customs of the, some of the ancestors out there in Djibouti, Djibouti, Africa. So we was on the pier and the workers was working on the pier, right? So in front of us, I hate to say this right here, but they took a dump right in front of us on the rocks. And then they jumped in the water to clean us off. But what's interesting was that they grabbed the pigs to eat the crap that they took on the rocks. So I kind of firsthand in the military seen the real purpose of the pig while on deployment. And that's what I wanted to add to that. So uh, we know how, that's always the question was, how, how they were using the barrier, how they was keeping the ark clean while they was out to sea for all them months and all them days. And, this scene in my experience and seeing how the pig operate and how they use the pig out there in a country of Africa. Now I can understand now what was clean, keeping the art clean while they were uh, out in that water. And I yield. Told I, Dawn. So thank you for tying into the point that everything that the Most High creates has a function or purpose. So there's unclean animals that was on the ark that would eat waste. <laughs> See, that's why we want to bring this thing visually clear so people can stop making these excuses. There are unclean animals that were on the ark that will eat waste. So there was a work that still had to be done while on the ark. So while being saved, there was still work to do. Don't just think you're just going to be saved and there's not still work to do. And Mishpaka, I want us to Look at what Israel went through when they came out of Egypt. I want us to look at what Noah and them went through when they were being saved and understand that in salvation, you're going to have to come outside your comfort zone. You're going to have to prepare to come outside your comfort zone. Some of us are going to be too used to these modern comforts that we, once again, as I said, doing Pesach, we're not even know what salvation looks like because we're not going to want to walk salvation out because it's going to look depressing for a time. We could be tight for a time. See, we're all used to our own space right now. What happens if we have to be confined to a space and smelling each other who have not had a shower? So we want to make it visual. Because we've been church to the point where we just think everything is just going to be, ah. but the scripts tell us otherwise. 
but this was still a blessing from the Most High. So after they came off the ark, so I just wanted to bring that point out in this particular chapter. Now, after all this has happened, do you see what's the first thing he did? He got off that ark. When he got off that ark, everybody's dead. And we've been shaking around on this ark all this time. Man, if you never praised the Most High before, I believe you want to praise him to know that you still have your life. Uh, praise him because you just got off that ark. So the first thing he did when he got off the ark, it says, uh, verse 18, and Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing and every fowl, um, whatsoever creeping uh, upon the earth, and Noah built an altar unto Yah and took of every clean, here we go again, of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offer burnt offerings on the altar. And Yah smelled a sweet savor and Yah said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. So the point I'm making is when he got off that ark, the first thing he did was give the most high thanks. Thank him for his life. Thank him for his family life. My children's life, we're still here. And also thank you, not only that we still remain, but that we just got off this ark. See, sometimes we're going through the storm that y'all wants us to go through because sometimes going through your storm may separate you from those who the most I want to separate you from. Because nobody want to go through no storm. But they went through the storm to be saved. And they had to weather the storm to be saved. And when he got off that ark, he praised the most high. The first thing he did, he wanted to offer unto the most high. And what did he offer the most high? Of everything that was clean on that ark, clean beasts, clean fowls, anything that was clean out of those sevens, he took of them and he offered on the altar unto the most high. Again, if we read with reading comprehension skills, he did not offer anything unclean. So from the very beginning, mankind knew the difference between clean and unclean animals because the Most High had already let them know. And for anybody that wants to use that quote when it's not written, where we only got to be a clown in thought if we cannot comprehend what we just read here. Every clean beast and every clean fowl he offered one of on the altar. That is the reason why, as Ema said earlier, that was the reason for the seven clean and the two unclean. Those unclean have a purpose also. Those pigs, as uh, Sarah Yohanna was saying, he actually seen how they did things in Djibouti, Africa. They seen men take dumps in front of them because there's no bathroom. And then they had the pigs come eat the poop. That's what pigs are for. And we want to eat chitterlings for Thanksgiving. That's the intestine where all the waste is at. Okay, let me get that focus. Let's jump to the book of Leviticus, the 11th chapter. So we can go to the laws now. Leviticus chapter 11 can knock y'all. Let's start with verse 1. Leviticus 11, verse 1. And y'all speak unto Moses and Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which you may, which you shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever part of the hoof, and is cloven footed, and chew of the cud among the beasts, that shall you eat. Nevertheless, these shall you not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide not, or that of them that divide the hoof, as the camel. Because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. 
they are unclean to you. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall you eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing that is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. You should not eat of their flesh. Okay, so but you shall have it. their. So let's pause it. So we won't read the whole eleventh chapter, but for anyone that may want to know uh, where the dietary law is that the Most High has ordained and appointed, it's going to be in Leviticus chapter eleven and Deuteronomy chapter fourteen. It's going to have the same dietary law written again, but it's saying, "And Yah spake unto Moses." So this is a whole another time period now. This is now him talking to Moses, which was many years after Noah, hundreds of years after Noah. So it says, and Yah spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, speak unto the children of Israel, thee, and say, saying, these are the beasts you shall eat among the beasts that are on the earth. And then he started telling you what you should not eat because they're either unclean to you or they're an abomination. So the Most High is given Israel, as they come out of Mitzrayim, out of Egypt, the dietary law that they have to follow. Because man should have already known the difference between clean and unclean, but when you're living in a society that does not follow Elohim, and when people are telling you that you can consume things, you start doing the customs of mankind. So the Most High basically here is stating again what is clean animals and what is unclean animals. No one knew in the beginning what was clean and unclean animals. So there's nothing changed. The Most High has always let his man know what could be consumed and what could not be consumed. What should be, what shouldn't be. Dietary law is written. So, and in here we see that, and I know myself personally, when I was coming up in the church, if the person told me they ain't eat pork, ah, you're a Muslim. We have to stop judging people based upon regurgitating statements that our family members or our church members have said, and, and, and Mr. McCaw, and y'all read and study everything behind me that I present to you to make sure that I'm right and I'm correct according to the word of Elohim and to also make sure that you are not repeating something or saying something that you don't even understand the way that a lot of us have judged others prematurely, not even understanding what's in our own word. We were out here saying, oh, it got to be a Muslim because they don't eat pork. The Most High's word said, don't eat pork. That has nothing to do with being a Muslim. Any child of, I'm going to use regular common terms, any child of God or any uh, B'nai or child of Elohim, child of Yah, should not eat pork, should not eat anything unclean. But we want to give credit to, oh, that's what Muslims do. Not even knowing that it's written right in our own Bible. And then when we now tell people the dietary laws in the Bible, you show it to them about the Bible, then they want to jump to the New Testament, which we're about to go to now. Let's now go to the book of uh, 1 Timothy, Kanakia, chapter 4. And I know I'm going fast tonight, Mr. Picard, but I just want to try to cover some of these thoughts. First Timothy chapter four. So Noah, when he got off the ark, well, before getting off the ark, he was told going on the ark to take seven by pairs of a kind of clean, take two of a pair of unclean of all the beasts. Iman Sarah Yohanna had already covered earlier on there was a reason. So Johanna said, well, why seven clean and why just two of the unclean? The function and the purpose of the clean was dual in nature. There are certain functions that those animals, certain animals do. And then some of it, and part of their function is going to also be food supply or sacrifice. So the reason why there was seven clean, because they had to have some to sacrifice. They were also going to have to have uh, some to eat. And as uh, Gadol Okoti, uh, uh, Angelisa has said, and also animals produce quicker than, than mankind do. So there could have been some that could have started developing or having some children. 
That part I don't know, but just when you know animals do produce quicker than um than we do. So as long as you got seven, whether on the ark or when they got off the ark, there will still be enough for them to uh, be fruitful and multiply. As it said in Genesis that you bring them so that they can come off this ark and they can be fruitful and multiply. That they will mate and multiply and produce more. But I need the clean to produce more expedient than the unclean because that's going to be for sacrifice as well as for your food source. Okay, so now let's jump to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and start at verse 1, can I? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So let's stop here for a second. Who speaketh? Somebody tell me who speaketh. You said it? The Ruach. The Ruach. The Spirit. So the Spirit of the Ruach speaketh expressly. Speak of what, Kanakia? Expressly. That, that, in the let, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay, so now the Ruach is letting it be known that in latter times, in latter days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So the Ruach is letting it be known that there's going to be some people in latter times that's going to depart from the faith. They're going to be listening or giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We have to be very careful when we talk about what these doctrines of devils are and who these uh, uh, and who these seducing spirits are. So there are those that, as we read further, you're going to see the text that they use. They come here to support eating unclean animals. And they're going to say that anybody that's teaching you to keep the dietary law huh, is teaching doctrines of devils. We have to be very careful with what we listen to because who gave Moses the words of the Old Testament? Who gave Moses the words of the covenant? Who gave Moses the law? This is interactive study. Yeah. 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 The most high. Elohim. God. Whichever term one is familiar with. Gave Moses those laws. And it is not Moses' law. It was the law of the most high. The most high told Noah to bring clean seven by seven. Unclean by two. The most high told the children of Israel when they were leaving out of Mitzrayim. When he brought them to the mount after they got out. Here is your dietary law. Don't eat this unclean stuff. You only are to eat that which is clean. If you eat unclean stuff, it's abominable. It makes you unclean and you become an abomination for what you eat. So in modern day, the 20th century that we're living in, for people to say, what type God that judges or simply on what you eat? The type God that is the author, the type God that is the creator who created food to be consumed, and created stuff that animals that is not food, and he tells us not to eat it. But back to my focal point. So there are those who teach this from this new age teaching and the church doctrines that's teaching that you can eat what you want to eat, and you don't have to do, you don't have to keep the old testament. They're saying that anyone that's trying to tell you to keep the dietary law is teaching doctrines of devils. That is scary if you have common sense. That is scary if you have reading comprehension skills. Y'all said unto to, to Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, of all that's in the earth of the animals, here's what you shall eat, here's what you shall not eat, of the clean you shall eat, of the unclean you shall not eat, of those that don't have fins and scales in the water you shall not eat. Those are the words of Elohim. So now when someone is trying to tell us that seducing spirits and doctrines of devils are teaching you, you have to ask yourself, well, really, who is the seducing spirit? Who actually has the doctrine of devils? 
Because we have the word of Elohim supporting everything that we say. Verse two, can I count? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So let me stop here for a second. I'm gonna make a I'm, I'm gonna make a statement here, and I'm not making a statement to be offensive in any way. One reason why these doctrines are coming over and everybody feeling like they have the Holy Spirit and they feel like the Spirit is speaking to them and they speak against the laws of the Most High, already it's a spirit of error and a spirit of a lie right there. If you think that the Most High Spirit is going to have you doing contrary to what his word says, and if you're going to say that someone is teaching the Torah of the Most High are the seducer spirits and we're teaching the doctrines of devils, like I said, just with the comprehension or common sense, if you can comprehend what you read, you have to know, but Yah said that. So are we calling Yah the devil? By saying that they're seducing spirits with doctrines of the devil? So that's one thing. But one reason why those doctrines fly is because of replacement theology is a term that's used. Replacement theology. They have taken the word and made it about the Christian church. The Bible, the Torah, the New Testament, has absolutely nothing to do with the Christian church. It has nothing to do with the church in general. It has to do with Israel. See, replacement theology is they erase Israel and now it's all about the church. When this word was still to Israel, the nation of priests. So if you take them out of the equation, you erase them out. So now all that was what Israel was supposed to do. But now this is for the church. There's nothing in this word that transferred the focal point of Yah's word being given to the children of Israel to not be given to the church. You go to the church, the synagogue, the ecclesia, the school, the assembly, the building, the place of worship to learn the words of Elohim. But the words of Elohim was never intended to be a church book. It was a covenant between him and his people, the nation of Israel, who was supposed to be the priest of the whole earth to teach this truth. So now when they've taken Israel out of the equation and they made everything about the church, they cannot tell you that anybody that comes to you talking any of that stuff that Israel had to do that's in that Old Testament, that's doctrines of devils and a seducing spirit. But seduction to me sounds like something that will have me doing something that's contrary to the word of Elohim. Not someone that's telling me to do what the word of Elohim already tells me to do. Continue on, Kanak, got verse three. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. Read on. For every creature of Elohim is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of Elohim in prayer. Damn, there it is. So for every creature of Elohim is good and nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of Elohim and prayer. So my question will have to be is, what is the word of Elohim? What is the word of Elohim? The dietary law in Leviticus. The dietary law is in Leviticus. The Ten Commandments are actually not called the Ten Commandments in Hebrew. They're Asherah Debarim, which are the what? Ten words. It's an idiom that means the ten words. So, and the Torah or his word is referred to as what? The word. So it says, for it is sanctified by the word of Elohim and prayer. You have to know the word of Elohim to know what can be received as food. Every creature of Elohim is good and nothing to be refused. They're twisting this because we've already covered in Genesis. The most I said bring seven clean, two unclean. There's a function and a purpose for different beasts. So if you know what is in his word is clean, 
then you can consume that. But you cannot make something clean that the word of Elohim has already pronounced unclean. We don't have that type of power, that type of authority. The most high, if he pronounced it unclean, it is unclean. But every beast can be received. Why? Because we're in some latter times now. What is one of the newest dietary teachings that's out today? Somebody help me out. What's one of the newest dietary teachings that's out today? Yes, sir, don't shout them all. Yeah, I would say, you know, going vegan. <laughs> going vegan. The most high never intended for you to eat meat. So you have people that want to now say, well, you can eat pork, crab, or shellfish. But there's a doctrine today that tells people that you can't eat meat the most I never intended it. I have nothing against vegan. I have nothing wrong with going vegan because I also have already did a teaching. Uh, we'll be going into a teaching again at some point, And I need to be getting myself back focused to be removing meat from my diet. Some. Because our forefathers did not eat as much meat as we eat. So, yes, meat can be consumed. Meat can be consumed with Thanksgiving, but we need to be consuming it in moderation. But it says in latter times, so we have people today, as well as people in times past, that would tell people you can't eat things that the most I said you could eat. You can't eat lamb. You can't eat meat. There's those that I'm not knocking anybody, wherever their belief structure is at, I just have to teach what the word says. As for the text, I don't know what vegan Israelites told the most high when he told them to prepare that lamb, how to prepare that lamb to get ready to have that feast, that they weren't going to eat no lamb. I, I mean, but that's, that's the text. So if a person feels like they don't eat meat, so be it. I don't knock that. I don't speak against that. That's a person's personal preference. But now when you put in the name of Yah on something and you can't eat that because it's bad for you because Yah never intended for you to have that, now I have a problem with that because Yah's word don't support that. But to say for health reasons and I'm being health conscious, I'm trying to lose weight, I'm trying to work on my cholesterol, whatever that may be that a person is trying to do, I think my, my thoughts are clearer because I, I feel less bogged down so be it. It's healthy. Cain. But whenever, and, 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 and listen, there are people out there right now online teaching, and they call them, and they're actually teaching this doctrine today, that you're evil if you're eating flesh. That's not the word of the creator. But back to the common thought that you're going to face, they use this scripture to say, that you can eat anything you want to eat. So crabs and shrimp is fair game as long as you pray over it. But we've read in Genesis, seven clean to unclean. We've read in Leviticus, the 11th chapter. We can also read in Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. The Most High gave mankind a dietary law. That is the word of Elohim, as Ema Shoshana said. So it says with the word of Elohim and with prayer. So when you have something on your plate, that the most high has appointed or said is okay for you to eat and you pray over it, you can receive it with thanksgiving. You can receive it with a clear conscience. And especially if you know it have not been offered to an idol. But everybody come here only for that reason, but it gives you a number of things they're gonna be doing. They're gonna be forbidden to marry. They're gonna be those that saying you should be celibate and you shouldn't be married when the word of the most high says what? It is not good for man to be alone should marry. The most high occurred that he started the Bible off with man and woman joining together being one flesh. There will be those that will teach that you should not marry or they will forbid to marry. When the most high has ordained marriage and he says that the, bed is, that the marriage bed is honorable and all and is not defiled, but there will be those that will say that you can't marry when from the very beginning of the scriptures we see when we read Genesis 1 and 2 he created a man and a woman, and then in chapter two, he joined them together, and they became one flesh and told them to be fruitful and multiply. But now man would tell people, you can't marry, you shouldn't be married. Then you have these priests that's molesting these little boys, 
but they're supposed to be so chast and we took a vial of celibacy. What good is a vial of celibacy and you're out here molesting little boys? You got a double sin going on. Well, back to the point. So forbidden to marry and commanded to abstain from meats, which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Let's jump to Psalms 119. Jump to Psalms 119. And this is why they say we talk out of the Bible too much when they start having conversations, because you have to go and pull these scriptures out for them. Psalms 119, Kanakia, and uh, 142. Psalms 119, 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. Your righteousness, this is King David speaking, saying that the most highest righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your Torah or your law is the truth. So now if we go back, which we don't have to go back and read again, but if you go back to Timothy when it said, for those that believe and know the truth, then if you believe and know the truth and you know the word of Elohim, then you'll know what you can eat and what you cannot eat. You'll know what you can pray for and ask to be received with thanksgiving and what you cannot receive with thanksgiving because the most high does not tell you to eat certain things. And for those same people that would tell you that you can eat pig, which is actually a garbage disposal, a trash compactor, ask them, do they eat dog? They'll look at you like you're crazy. A dog is a pet. A pig is a garbage truck. Let's drop that. Let's go back to Genesis. <laughs> Before I go forward, does anybody have any comments or questions? Did I lose anyone? Or does anybody see the dots that we were connecting with that? Any comments before I move forward? Back, we're going back to Genesis. All right, let's move forward to chapter nine, Kanaka. Yeah? Sheep of Genesis chapter 9. And Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the earth, and upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as oh, the green oh, herb. Oh, 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 oh. So he blessed the children of Israel. Not Shika, not children of Israel. So blessed the house of Noah. And now in verse three, as he blessed them, and they offer the ark. They talk about the fish of the sea and all the fowls. It says, every moving thing <clears throat> that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. Can someone tell me what they get out of verse uh, three right here? The same as he spoke before. Every clean animal that he has permitted them to eat is now available to them, as well as the plant life. So every clean animal, as well as the plant life that I've already given you, now every beast can be received. But of, as Ema said, but the clean, as he's already told them. Shashamar, yes, sir? Okay, well, yeah, I was basically just going to kind of touch on what Ema said. You know, the law you know, still stands, you know, there's a clean and there's an unclean. And I also thought about in the sense that you know, there are animals such as, you know, donkeys and horses, which are unclean, but they can still be used for work, you know. Are you? Exactly. exactly. The horse is a good ride, right? Horses are a ride and, 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 and donkeys used for work. That's right. Uh, sorry, Johanna. No, the key word is, is every green herb. So we know that every green herb you could eat, you, have, you couldn't eat poison ivory. Some, some of the grass stuff you can't eat like grass. Grass, we can't consume grass like some like cows, some animal could consume grass. So when, when they say as the green herb, he basically saying like, the fruit tree that consumable for our bodies. So 
we know that the clean animals are consumed for our bodies and the unclean animals are not consumed for our bodies because of the things inside the unclean animals, all the toxins. So that was the key word as the green herbs, not you. Hallelujah. I just seen a message come up. Hallelujah. I told her for that share, though. Okay. Um, is there a specific, uh, uh, my sister, uh, if you can type in the, the message, um, if you didn't fully understand 1 Timothy 4, uh, which part you want me to go back over or which, what's the, uh, if you can help me out with that so I can try to respond to that. Well, um, I've mentioned the Leviticus um, to someone before about, you know, you know, not eating and they've counteracted me with this um, scripture here with the first Timothy and first four. And I wasn't sure how to respond to that because when I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going over it and I'm like, okay, the spirit expressly says this. So when I kind of recognize, I say, well, does Yah goes back on his word? I don't typically understand, you know, well, if, you know, if they say it to me, well, in chapter four, for every creature of Yah is good and nothing to be refused. If it's, re, um, you know, received with thanksgiving, I don't fully understand how, um, you know, you counteract with that to someone else if they hit you with that word there. How, how, you know, do we go back to Genesis or that's pretty much what I'm asking. I didn't fully understand, you know, if, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yes. So, uh, hallelujah. So, uh, again, that goes back to what I'm saying. See what's uh, was written that's not there. So, um, Kanakia, uh, get the, uh, go back to First Timothy for me. And so, yes, yeah, so uh, again, uh, my sister, so the Most High says, um, whom shall he teach uh, knowledge? Whom shall he give understanding? And he says, those that are weaned from uh, uh, weaned from, uh, drawn from the milk, drawn from the breast and weaned from the milk. Precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, meaning that for you to get a full understanding sometime of the Most High's word, you will have to read a, a, a sentence someplace or a commandment someplace, and then you go to another scripture someplace else that's speaking about that same commandment that's going to bring more understanding to what's being said. When you're dealing with someone that don't want to do the New Testament, I mean, don't, don't want to do the whole Bible as we believe in doing, when they come from that mindset of the theology or the life they've been told, sometimes it is very difficult to navigate through, even through the scripture with them because they, they still just won't receive it. But to try to do the best that you can with it because even me, I still have difficulty um, dealing with some people, it's not really difficult because once you've explained it and you know that you're as thorough as you possibly can be, if they just refuse to receive, you know, there's it, nothing you can do about that. But like you're saying, you want to be able to understand how to present it as best as possible. So again, let's let's go through this again. Um, and, and let's slow it down just a little bit, Kanak Yah, where you read, you read at your pace. I'm the one talk so fast. So let me slow it down just a little. Go back to First Timothy for me again, Kanak Yah, chapter four. First Timothy chapter four. So start at verse one, Kanak. Okay. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Pause. So my first reason for going here when I started here, my sister, is because I stated, who gave the law to Moses? Yeah, this whole thought is running together. It starts, the spirit speak, the Ruach is letting us know that in latter times, there's going to be seducing spirits. People are going to depart from the faith. They're going to be giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So the first thing you want to do to them is, so are you calling God a devil? No, I call a God a devil. Well, you are because if you're saying that, I'm saying that his word says we shouldn't eat pork and we shouldn't eat crabs, and you're saying that I'm teaching the doctrine of devils, 
then you're calling Yah a devil or you're calling God a devil because that's his word. His word says not to eat that. I didn't seduce you or come up with that. So if you're saying I'm trying to seduce you or I'm now speaking doctrines of devil and the spirit told you that, the question will be what spirit? Because I'm telling you what the Bible says in the beginning when the instructions were given. So at first you're gonna have this issue because they're gonna tell you they don't deal with the Old Testament that's been done away with. So that's gonna be a part of one of the elephants that's in the room, but let's move a little bit further, okay? So go to verse three, Kanakia. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which Elohim have created. They, they, to they never focus on the forbidden to marry part. The only thing they want to do is come here to get to the part about the meats to justify eating unclean foods. So it says, forbidding to, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So the seducing spirits and the doctrine of the devils that some would say that we have because we're teaching the dietary laws and the things that the Most High said, the first thing again you want to do is say, well, if that's God's word, you call him the devil because that's his word. It's in the Bible. And then they're going to say, well, yeah, this is in the Bible also. Okay, I give you that. But commanded to abstain from meats which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. It's going to be a little bit hard to break everything down to them as we do in our study time, but we've already covered. What is belief? Belief is even our of faith. That's an action word. So if you believe in the most high, then you have to believe in his word and his word from the beginning. Now to answer part of your question, part of your question is yes, you have to go back to Genesis in which they don't want to go to because they don't deal with the Old Testament. But there's no other way of having this conversation because we have to go back to the word of Yah. And it says in the beginning, there was clean and unclean, which lets you know that them that believe and know the truth, then they believe what the Most High said is clean. They believe what the Most High said is unclean. And they have the truth because they have the word of Elohim. So forbidden to marriage, abstain from meats, which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Hold that where you are for a second, Kanak, y'all, and jump back to uh, Psalms 119 and 142. My reason for going here is because it's going to tell you what the truth is. So it said, for them that believe and know the truth. In, in, um, in uh, 1 Timothy, where we are, it says that it can be received with the word of Elohim and prayer. So what is the word of Elohim? The whole Bible is the word of Elohim, and he's given a dietary law. He's told us about clean and unclean from the very beginning. So for them that believe and know the truth, the question will be, what is truth? Psalms 119 and 142. This is King David speaking. Read that for me, Kanak. Psalms 119, verse 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is the truth. So King David has already defined whose righteousness is righteous. And he's already given us the definition of what is the truth. And your law is the truth. So now when you go back to Timothy, forbid it to marry and the commandment to abstain from meats, which Elohim have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe, have faith in the most high and know the truth. Now here's the part that I was about to go into where we just left from in Genesis. For every creature of Elohim is good and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. I'm going to read that again, my sister. For every creature of Elohim is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So I said every creature, right? So as Imash Oshana just stated, let's go back to Genesis. And I'm, I'm going to give you, uh, and I'm going to tell y'all uh, a, a little secret that I do sometimes, my sister. 
um, and, and not just my sister, to everybody. I, I, I will tell y'all a secret. I actually sometimes practice in the mirror conversations with people. That way you'll be skilled with going through your word and you ask it from a couple of different ways. Well, I know this is a common question that they're going to come at me with. So somebody coming at me with this question, how am I going to respond to it? And I actually play it out in the mirror, having a conversation with how I will respond. So if you just start doing that, if for one is going to give you scriptural knowledge and the memory of the scripture, you're going to be able to quote the whole scripture when you give it to them. And you're going to get more and more familiar with it yourself. The more you practice, quote it, answer some of these topics. So we just seen that it says every creature of Elohim to be received with thanksgiving. So then I just stopped this in Genesis chapter three. I mean, chapter nine, verse three. So, but let me read to the point. I'll read this myself, Kanak, y'all. So Genesis chapter nine and verse two. Well, I'll start at verse one. Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that move upon the earth and upon all the fish of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Here's the key that's going to tie in with where we just came from in Timothy. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. So what did he just say here in Genesis? Every living creature that moves is for food. Is that what y'all get out of that verse? And I'm not only talking to Shakira, I'm talking to everybody on the, on the call right now. Is that what, are we seeing that, the verbiage, how it's written, right? Are we seeing that? I'm seeing how it's written, but as he is saying in his word that it's according to what he has spoken in his law of clean and unclean. And that's the argument, my sister, that if they will not use common sense, if they will not read, use reading comprehension skills, and if they still want to walk in the spirit of error, then sometimes you just have to present it, pray for them. But because we just read when Noah got off the ark, let's build, let's build this point all the way back up. When Noah went on the ark, the most I said seven clean of a kind by pairs, too unclean. We've already had a discussion and Ema already said that they had the seven clean because the seven clean, you had to have more because part of it was going to be used for food. Part of it was going to be used to be sacrificed. When Noah came off the ark, he offered clean of all the clean to Yah. After he offered up the clean to Yah, now this is coming right after he just made his offer to the Most High and the Most High just told him of every beast, of everything that liveth, you can now eat because they were eating herbs in the beginning. So now he's letting you know, you can eat of the animals also of the clean animals. That's the part that we have to understand. Um, I seen a, a hand up, let me, uh, Miss Dyson, uh, I see your uh, hand up. Um, yes, uh, good evening, everyone. And that was the, I was sitting here listening this whole time and that's what kept coming to me, common sense, you know, so, Putting the pieces together, I think a lot of it is us dealing with common sense. And it's common sense to say, you know, when Elohim said this, and then we have another verse that says this, common sense says still follow that same track. That's all I had to say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's exactly, exactly as she just stated. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's why when I keep making a statement, try to see what's not written there that's written because it's not written in the text where we're reading, but it's already written someplace else. And so when you read here a little and there a little, you're gonna be like, oh, well, it said this here. It said this like three or four times. So it has not changed. So when you get to the New Testament, it said every creature is be received with thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. Do we know that Noah believed the truth? We didn't see where Noah was given the dietary law, but we know that he was told to bring what? The clean animals on by seven and the unclean. And he came off and he offered only of the clean. And then right after that, the most I said, of every beast you can have for food with the common sense or the understanding of, as the text is already written throughout, that if he offered to the most high clean, he knew what to offer. And if we know anything about offerings, part of the offering of a burnt offering is going to be part of it is burnt. Then as an offering that when you prepare certain offerings, 
is for the priest to eat. So if an offering is going to be made to the Most High of clean stuff, and the priest and his household are supposed to eat of the offerings that's brought to the temple of the Most High, then we know it's all clean food. But that's the long answer. So, um, but but Shakira, I know that's uh, that scripture can be uh, kind of hard to uh, navigate. But that's the reason why you have to go to so many different places. And sometimes people are not going to be willing because that's the kind of conversation we get a lot of time. Why y'all want to talk out of the book? Um, they don't. Once you start going to all those different scriptures. Some people don't want to go to the scriptures with you, but that's the only way to get the proper understanding of the word of the most high is by going to what his word actually says. And not, not you know, everyone always makes the quote, don't put your, uh, your trust in man, but that's exactly what we do. Man is the one that comes up with, as they did in the beginning, doing whatever we want to do while the word itself clearly states clean and unclean. And so for them that believe and know the truth, what is the truth? Yah's law is truth. His word is truth. Doctrines of devils, he gave those words to Moses. So are you saying that Moses was a devil? Are you saying the creator himself was a devil? You have to tear that, you have to tear that layers down like that to make them think. So the thing is, as long as you can provoke thought, provoke thought, and then you pray for them, and hopefully um, they receive. Um, did that help any of my sister? And it may not put you exactly yes. where you want to be right now, but that, so that's the reason why we're going through these precepts like this, start showing, and that's why we're reading the New Testament and the Old Testament together so that we can see that the thought does not change. But anytime you are not reading from Yah's book, you can create a doctrine because you're not going by his whole book. So in his book, he's already told us. So now when we hear that statement of all things, we've seen that statement used twice. We've seen it used in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, but we've seen it in the, New Te in the Old Testament coming right off of a man that brought the clean animals and offered the clean animals. So you know, he's not gonna eat anything unclean himself. Okay. And that is something uh, uh, we're preparing to do also, um, uh, Ms. Bacar, um, I'm not gonna do it tonight, but I am uh, planning to do a, a, a witnessing uh, study, uh, a witnessing series. And what that's gonna be is gonna be and I want you all to help me with this by giving me those hard questions that you're asked. And what we're going to do is we're going to try, like what we're doing tonight, we're going to go through some of those harder dis discussed topics that, uh, that the, the world commonly uses that's contrary to the word of the Most High. And we're going to go through like some, some scenarios of trying to respond to those things. Because hearing the word and understanding it sometimes, it can still be hard to sometimes express it to someone else to get them to understand it the way that you understand it. So I, I would like to uh, walk us through some of those role plays. But to chat back to chapter nine, can I, y'all, pick up a three and read forward. Uh, sneak out, Malak, y'all, what did you put? Uh, uh, sneak out one more, let me see what uh, Adon Malak put for me. Uh, Cause I seen this message late. Sorry, Johanna, you can go ahead and make your statement. Let me read, read what uh, Adon's saying. Okay. Okay, Adon. Also, once another one uh, scripture they try to use to combat by eating the uh, unclean in the brick is in uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 15. When they always try to use this verse also, which is state, there's nothing from without a man that entered to him that can defile him, but the things that come out of him, those are that defile the man. So they try to use that also to justify them. Um, they're able to eat unclean animals, only they, they not coming out them defiled. And, that, that, and, that's a, and that's an easy breakdown right there. If you read, uh, like I said, we have to have reading comprehension. That particular scripture that he just quoted that they do use to try to justify eating unclean, it was specifically about why your disciples didn't wash their hands before they eat. It didn't say that they was eating unclean meats. Why didn't your disciples wash their hands before dinner was the question. And he was like, because they might have had some dirty hands, they didn't wash their hands. What goes into the belly does not defile you what comes out. So your intent is focusing on somebody that didn't wash their hands and you're not focused on the things that you say out of your mouth. So that's an easy breakdown as well. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, add that to the list of dawn so we can put all those 
in a topic form. But let me, uh, uh, Malachi, I gave us a good scripture in reference to clean and unclean. Kanaka, give me Leviticus chapter uh, 20 and verse 25. Hey, Moira, if I, if I may. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, also, never let anyone just pick a random scripture and let that and let doctrine rest on it. Um, always tell them to continue to read on. And in verse five, it clearly says what is sanctified. So from there, you tell them what sanctified really means, which is basically set apart. And then you can go back to the reference uh, scriptures from there. Toda Adon, Toda Adon. And as Elder Willie would always say, yeah, uh, uh, you don't deal with one verse Charlie's. As he said, as people that want, want, want to read one verse and make a doctrine, that's pretty much what, what Malak, Adon Malak was just talking about. They try to support their whole doctrine by one verse. Uh, but you have to have them read, read on. So total for that, Adon. And total for the scripture add in um, Leviticus chapter 20 and 25. Come out, y'all. Let's get that. Leviticus 20 and 25. You should therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean and between unclean fowls and clean. You should not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or any manner of living thing that creeps upon the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. So again, for them that know the truth, and as Malachi I just brought out about what the sanctified actually mean, sanctified is going to be something that's set apart. So those that know the word of Elohim and believe the truth of Elohim, they're going to know what is sanctified. They're going to know what can be received with thanksgiving as meat that can be consumed um, or, or not, you know. So, um, so again, the word tells us to put a difference between it, and it's written all throughout the text. All right, let's go back to uh, Bereshit chapter uh, nine, and go ahead and finish that chapter out of Dawn. We get ready to uh, finish our closing statements, concluding chapter nine. Oh, I missed. He's going to finish chapter nine. Yourself, uh, I got you. All right, Kanaki, I'll let's conclude on in uh, chapter 9, verse 4. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, and at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth blood, man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. And you be fruitful and multiply and bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And Elohim spake to Noah and his, to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And Elim said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud. It shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh and the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between Elim and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And Elohim said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah and of them was the whole earth overspread. 
And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. And he said, Blessed be Elohim of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Elohim shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. And all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. All right, hallelujah. Before we uh, open, that, um, open that one up for discussion, um, I happen to go back, and I just seen another message that I missed earlier. So, um, uh, Zakane Eliyahu says, here all and or every is qualified with the understanding that as has as already been stated or forehand by Yah as in what is clean, Verse what is unclean. We then therefore can conclude that Yah has not gone back on his word, changing his mind about what is clean versus unclean. Yah is not a schizo <laughs> Yah is not a schizophrenic. So um, exactly. So that would almost be making like the most high be schizophrenic, going back and forth on his word. Um, and I want to read another scripture uh, just in support of uh, a Koji Shakira, in support of the thought of. First Timothy, Zakane Yaquab said, gave a scripture in support of that. So I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 30. I'll read this myself, Kanaki, because I know you've been reading a lot. Um, Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 through 10. Um, it says, now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That this is a rebellious people, lying children. Children that will not hear the law of Yah, which say to the seers or the prophets, see not, and unto the prophets, prophesy not, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. And that's basically, uh, and the reason why he said that's in support of Timothy, because that's what people want to hear. Most people want you to tell them the lie. And it's, it's showing you here that Yah's children basically did not want the prophets to prophesy truth to them. They wanted the prophets to tell them smooth things. Tell me lies. Tell me what I want to hear other than the word of Elohim. So sometimes it will be hard for you to deliver that uh, message to people. Yes, sir, Zakain. And, and, and just to kind of uh, add to, to, to that verse right there is, um, he's telling um, to write this in a book because later on it's going to be it's you're going to need to show the people where they're wrong at where you know because of all the lies and all of that write this down in a book so you can show them later that, that the, the law is still in effect hallelujah hallelujah I told her for that Zakane and <clears throat> and a, a cozy Shakira <clears throat> excuse me lose my voice Thank you for asking that question, because that's what these studies are about also, that if we're going into it, the reason why we have the long studies and we ask the question, we give the floor, if, if, if we don't fully understand something, and sometimes we may get off and still not fully understand, but if we don't fully understand, uh, ask the question so we can discuss it, because you see how, uh, how everybody's pulled so much supporting uh, information to support us in, in our journey with the most high. So, Never so Mishmaka, never be ashamed to actually ask a question because I know I've sat in a lot of classes early on in my walk, not wanting to be the one that didn't understand. But no, that's why we're coming. We're coming so we can understand. So when the sister asked that, um, that's what we're supposed to do. If we don't fully understand it, then let us make another attempt to try to explain it. Or sometimes it'll be the ruach or the spirit that will have to give you the, the understanding fully. But we can present the information so that you have it, and the, the ruach can give you the understanding fully at some later point. But let us always ask. So um, in closing, before we get to the close, um, we're going back to chapter nine now to get these focal points in chapter nine. And um, 
So it's letting you know also, but the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. So again, um, it's letting you know also not only the dietary law, but it also lets us know that even meats that we can eat, they are supposed to be prepared a certain way. We're not supposed to eat rare steak. We're not supposed to eat rare meat. Our meats are supposed to be cooked. We're not supposed to eat the blood. There's a, a, a the way of preparing meat. Some of you might not be familiar with it, but it's called koshering. We actually kosher the meat also. And when kosher the meat, what you're doing is when you clean your meat and you soak your meat, you put the certain salts and stuff in the water to try to help pull as much of the blood out of the meat as possible. And then you cook the meat and then you definitely try to cook all the blood out of it. So um, we don't eat the rare meat and meat that leaves blood on our plates because the Most High's word said we're not supposed to eat blood. So again, that is custom when you're following other nations that tell you that, oh, you you cooking all the flavor out of it when you cook it like that. Well, no, I don't want to taste no blood anyway. So it lets you know that in the word of Elohim, not only does he tell us what to eat, but he also tells us how it's to be prepared. Our food is supposed to be cooked. We're not supposed to eat anything that has blood or we're not supposed to eat blood, okay? Um, it says, and surely your blood of your son lives will I, uh, will I require at thy hand of every beast will I require it and of the hand of man at the hand of every man brother will I require the life of man. Whoso shed of man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of Elohim, may he man. I think that's a, a, a very uh, powerful statement. The Most High said we should not actually kill other men, not just simply that, first of all, it's simple, thou shall not kill. The Most High did not put man here to kill one another. But now when you look at it from what Yah has just said here, we should know better than killing, but also, when we're killing another man, we're killing someone that is supposed to be in the image of Elohim. And when these nuggets come out, I just have to bring this up because I do know that there's some that has an issue with belief in Messiah and things like that because he found it not robbery to be equal with Elohim or people refer to him as God. And he himself had to say to those in his day and age, does not even your word say that ye are gods, but you shall die like men. So that's in the word. Like we are gods, but we shall die like men. Why? Because from the beginning, the most high created man in his image, at his likeness. So now he's saying that whatever man so sheds blood, his blood shall be shed by man because man has shed the blood of a man that's in the image of Elohim. Elohim made man in his image. So we should be trying to see the Yah in someone else. That's if they're serving Yah. But we should definitely not want to take life, if possible. Because the Most High gives life. Now, if a person is evil and wicked in sin, we know that there's scriptures other places that tells you there's a time and a place for everything under the sun. There is a time to kill, but it's not a time for murder. So murder is when you premeditate, you just go kill somebody because you and your anger or your frustration, you kill someone. But to defend your family from harm, and may we not forget to pray for the families of those who lost children in that school shooting in Texas. May we remember to pray for those that are in Trinidad who have men that are being uh, be, being displayed and taking their spines and stuff out. It's some gruesome stuff that's going on in the world right now. So we need to be mindful to pray for, for the families that have experienced this, this type of loss. So if there's someone coming to do bodily harm, then we as men and women have a right to protect our family. But we should not just, every time we get mad or upset with somebody, like what these, the younger generation is doing today, making music about killing all the time and picking up guns and just shooting one another. That's not how we should, we should live life. The Most High said, by man, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of Elohim made he man. We're supposed to be in the image of the Most High. And that's why we have these studies that we're having because we know that we've been removed so far from looking like our father, but we're trying to return back to his image to look like him spiritually. It says, 
I'm dropping now down to uh, verse eight. It says, Elohim spake unto Noah and to his sons with him saying, and I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living creature that is that is with you. Verse 11, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, this is the token of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. One thing that I wanna look at is, uh, we know that in the book of Psalms, it lets us know that the most High's mercy endures forever. But a lot of times we are walking in the favor or the blessings of a righteous forefather. There was a covenant made with Abraham because of Abraham's righteousness. The Most High made a covenant with Noah because of Noah's righteousness. Because he made this covenant or this agreement with Noah and all the earth, but he made it to Noah and promised that he would not destroy all the earth anymore, we are still reaping the benefits of not being destroyed by a flood anymore because of the righteousness of Noah not from anything we ourselves have done, but from a righteous individual who the most I had favor in, he said, I now establish my covenant with you and your seed after you. And I'm guaranteeing you that this will never happen again. I will never destroy the earth this way again by flood. So what I want us to look at also is a lot of times people feel like we're, we're, in, we're in grace or we're under grace. A lot of times we just under the promise of Yah that's been promised to a righteous forefather. And we still have to do our part to make sure that our election is sure that we are working on our salvation. Don't just think because the storm ain't destroying us that we're going to be saved while we're in sin. These storms are not fully wiping the earth out with a flood anymore because Yah made a promise to Noah. So every man and woman must endure to the end trying to do your best to please the most high by keeping his law, statutes, commandments, by praying to him and having faith in him and being thankful of the righteous forefathers that was before us that y'all made these covenants with and whose we are part of. We are part of that blessing that the most high blessed them with because of their obedience. But we got to do our part in our day and age to make sure that whenever our heart stops, whenever the Most High says it's time for him to take our breath and our flesh dies, that we have made our election short with the Most High and that we're not around here thinking that we're going to be ascending or going to a place where we won't even be welcome if we're not living righteous as the examples of Enoch who walked with Yah and Noah who walked with Yah. But what is something right here in chapter 12, in chapter 9, in reference to this covenant? that y'all see here in chapter nine. Can y'all talk to me about the covenant, token of the covenant? What do you see? Shashmar? Can you, uh, covenant says all flesh. So my thought was that includes the animals as well. Yep, um, so, yep so because everything died prior to, because animals died prior to, uh, all men, except for Noah and his family, died prior to. So now the covenant is made with Noah, but he's established with you. And all that you brought with you on this side of the flood, the Most High has made a covenant with all living that he will not take the breath of life from mankind and beast that way again. All right? What's something else that we see about this covenant? It's for every generation to come. For every generation to come. So like I said, that grace that a lot of people think we're walking in, we're still walking in the favor that, that Noah had and what was established with him, but for the generation to come. So uh, we're still living in that same covenant. Zakan Yaquab, see your hand. Um, one thing I, I, I see here um, in that, like you said, the token of the covenant, 
is the wording of it. Like like uh, the Most High said that you know he when he brings a cloud over that the bow will remind him of the covenant that he won't destroy the earth um, with a flood no more. And to me that was kind of interesting because <laughs> you know it says he set that token in the sky not just for us but to remind him mm -hmm. that he said he wouldn't destroy the earth. And that was just interesting to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So. So you, you know how we set our little calendars and reminders? <laughs> like, like you said, I can't. And even though we know the most high don't need a reminder, he set a reminder. Like, this is to remind me that I'm not going to do it, but it's also let you know this is an agreement that I've made with you. So when you see this after those storms, just like when Noah and them came off that ark, y'all know how it is when you come out of a hurricane or a bad thunderstorm. When you see that uh, that rainbow out there, that is something that's in the word of Elohim. And a lot of us for many years didn't even know that the rainbow was written in scripture. A lot of us have been thinking because the way the rainbow has been hijacked, that the rainbow belongs to the LGBT community. No, the rainbow is not anything that supports LGBT community. And a rainbow is anything that we should be ashamed of. The rainbow is the sign of the covenant between the most high and mankind. And it still lets us know he's still on the throne. He's still in the Shemaim in the heavens and he still remembers because we see rainbows. And so now going back to people that don't wanna believe in the Bible at all, a lot of them don't even know that the rainbow is written in the Bible. We don't wanna believe in the most high. We don't wanna believe in God, but yet this word is so perfectly written that everything that we see as, as we read last week, the things, that we visibly see is proof of the invisible that we don't see. The rainbow is proof that Yah exists. The sun, moon, and stars is the proof that Elohim exists. You and I are proof that Elohim exists, but scientists still want to speak against it. And I hate to use a, com a, a comedian um, when referencing um, the word of Elohim, but uh, I just seen uh, Cat Williams, they had a clip up of him and he said, you know, there's those that believe in science and there's those that believe in God. He said, but if you give people a recipe, they can make anything when you give them a recipe. But the only thing that everybody knows the recipe to that they can't make is H2O. You know that it's H2O, but you can't produce it yourself. So you know there has to be an Elohim because he is the creator of all. So I just shared that because the rainbow is in the scriptures. We are written in the scriptures. Mankind is written in the scriptures. Animal life and every beast is written in the scriptures. So that's how we know the Most High exists. And as Zakane Yaakov just said, and the Most High has let us know, I still exist. And after these hard tempests or these hard storms that have us fearful sometimes because of how bad they can be, these category three, four hurricanes that we're having. And then when a rainbow comes out after that, yes, there was some, some destruction, but the Most High is like, I gave my word many generations ago that I would never destroy the earth with a flood again. So that's still nothing that we have to worry about about the earth being destroyed totally with a flood ever again. Uh, uh, what time are we at? Uh, did someone just say something? Okay, that might've been an accident. All right. I'm dropping out a verse. Um, 16, no, 15. And I will remember my covenant with which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant, which means as Ema Shoshana said, everlasting is gonna be the forever covenant between Elohim and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And Elohim said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Um, and I'll probably build on the last part later, uh, cause I know it's gonna be some discussion on the nakedness of Noah, the father. So I'm gonna yield my thoughts at this point cause I wanna give the imams and elders and brothers and sisters, uh, a chance for comments or any other words before we close out. 
but I'll I'll pick up with uh the latter portion of this next Shabbat. So at this time, I would like to yield the floor to the elders and Imams first, Imams and elders first, and then to any of the brothers and sisters, if anybody has any discussion, any questions, the floor is not open, um, Imams and elders. I would just like to say that there was a cold study and we have gone over Genesis many times before. We, we, we've done it at least a couple of times before, but so much came out tonight. And that's why it's so important that we continue to revisit these scriptures, what have you. Uh, it was a told study and I enjoyed it. And so much came out that I missed the last time I read it. So told out for a told lesson. Oh, praise be to the most high. Oh, praise honor, steamy to the most high. Shalom. I just uh, it was a tob, tob, tob lesson, and also about the unclean and the clean and unclean. I uh, we learned a long time ago that every, like you said, everything has a purpose, and like the the crabs and all that stuff in the ocean, they that was a big purpose to clean the to clean the ocean and stuff like that. Like the pig out, uh, the pigs and different type of animals on the ground was it to help keep the earth clean. And I just thank and praise y'all how you bringing that out because people don't realize these things are that he told us not to eat. They has a reason for it. They, their purpose is to clean, keep the uh, the ocean and the rivers and stuff from clean. And I know a while, it's been a while back. I heard on the news a long time ago that uh, they was having a problem with some part of the river or something. Like but this lady went back and put more of the clams and stuff back into the river. And then they didn't have that problem. So that's what the clams was doing when it's cleaning. And so uh, I, I think people don't realize why y'all you know, made these animals. There's a purpose, like you said, tobe, tobe, tobe blessing. Total for your words, uh, Yvonne. And total for sharing a bit about the clams, um, about putting them back in there and they notice a the difference. So total for that share. And I, and I think the reason why a lot of people don't even consider the function or the purpose of the animals because like Saw Yohanna was saying earlier, um, when he was in, in Djibouti, Africa, the fact that they did things still uh, kind of like the natural way, now that we have trash compactness, uh, trash removal services, we don't even see the function of what certain animals were for. And if you could see the function that they were for, you definitely would desire to eat them after seeing what all they eat. So thank you for that, Ima. Uh, Ima, Audrey, I see your hand. I just want the lamb chop on what Iman Nukert was just saying. Um, someone had mentioned that we have to use common sense. And I mean, if you just use common sense and you don't have all the precepts or what have you, when it says that, you know, y'all create everything and everything he created was good in that scripture, it is good for the purpose for which he created it. And that's only using common sense. So I yield. Hallelujah. I told her for that, Ima. I told her, I told her. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. I told, told, lesson. Um, it is so important to read the word from the beginning, the Bible from the beginning to the end, from the Genesis to Revelation. And if you don't know who you are and what the Father has um given you and commanded you and taught you and insisted upon you can't know when you go further down in the word what it is you're supposed to be not doing or doing so it's important to go back over and read the scriptures over and over again and it's good to have our teachers that the father the shepherds that the father has sent and ordained for us because this truly breaks it down if you are Yah's chosen people. These are the laws and commandments that he has taught us. And as we go on, if it's not literally broke down the way it was broke down in First Timothy's, um, the fourth chapter, if it doesn't say verbatim that it has to be the clean animals. If you didn't know back in Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus on, 
you would know and you would have to be taught this is how it is. This is clean animals that you are supposed to be eating if it's prayed over and it's all good because it's the clean animal. So this, this was a total blessing to break it down and explain and make it clear to us all. Hallelujah, I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I told her for the words, uh, those words of wisdom, Iman, and break it down because it is definitely important that we know uh, the whole book, you know, to have the proper understanding. And I just say, like to say, told our Yah that he is waking us up and he's giving us the understanding. We're, we're not all the way there yet, but we have the desire. He's revealing more and more to us. So thank you for the words of wisdom that you just shared, Iman. Hallelujah. All right. So I don't have to wait for the uh, the microphone um, thumb raises from the elders. So I can't, Eliyahu, do you have any words? Because I know Zakane Yaquab is going to try to wait and let you go first. So if you have anything, Zakane, I'm going to ask you, do you have anything before Zakane Yaquab speaks? Was Zakane, Zakane, was him trying to speak? He, he, was, he was very low and, and I couldn't really pick up what he was saying. I think he said he was just gonna, yeah, I don't wanna guess. I heard him, but it was very low. Okay. Can you, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, okay. I, I was saying that um, very, very told uh, lesson uh, points brought out and as was uh, illustrated and reduced to writing, Yah is not schizophrenic. They are, they meaning the Christians are very quick to point out he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yet they overlook the fact that if he is the same, nothing has changed about what he originally instituted when he gave dietary laws and uh, commandments and statutes and ordinances to be kept, that still hasn't changed to this day. And further, it is uh, revealed in Hazum, those very same things that he mentions in Bereshit, as well as in Leviticus and Deborin, they that keep these things, they are the ones that love him. So again, the question is uh, Bates to be asked, has he changed anything about himself? Answer, no, I yield. Total, total for the words of wisdom, all praise to the most high. And for those who didn't know, um, the books that Zakane quoted was Leviticus, um, Devarim is Deuteronomy, and Kazon is Revelations. Just for uh, those who uh, may not have understood the books that he was saying in Hebrew, so Kazon is the book of Revelation. All right, Toda Zakane for your words of wisdom. All right, Zakane Yaquab, you have any words before we open the floor? Toda Mori, hello, yeah, hallelujah. Um, to blessing, to to blessing, and and um, for me. Um, there was quite a few, um, I'm going to say different nuggets that, that I pulled out of this whole lesson, you know, and, and this time, the way you um, highlighted and illustrated the, the, the I don't want to say turmoil, but, but the, the, the needed endurance during that 40 days and 40 nights of being tossed and turned and, and and inside that ark, you know, um, even up to, um, I think it was like 120 years to build, to build the ark, you know, that, that you have to put in work. And then once you, once you kind of in that work, that, that, that you still have to be patient and faithful for the salvation on the end of it. And even though we go through turmoil and trial and tribulation, that, that, that Noah, and his and his mishpaka, um, you know, they were faithful enough to get in that ark and get sealed in, and then they were faithful enough to still continue to live inside that ark. And and really, I think it came down to like a hundred, I mean, uh, a year and little over a year uh, that they were actually in the ark. 
you know, before they were able to come out and get on dry land, but just kind of imagine that they still had to put in that work and still had to be faithful and still had to be uh, confident that the Most High's promises he's going to keep um, when, when, he, when they opened up that, uh, the hatch. And after that third time that they were able to get out and step on dry land, which then again was the salvation, you know, they, they, were, they were brought through all that trial and tribulation and turmoil but stayed faithful. I like the way you illustrated that with that, what's going on inside that ark for the, you know, for that time that they were in there, the stench, the crowdedness, they still had to feed and take care of everything that was, that was in there. They had to, uh, you know, I'm sure they got tossed and bumped around, <laughs> you know? Um, so I, I like the way you brought that out. And that's what I kind of picked up the most in this lesson. And, and one more thing I wanted to say too, um, about the clean and the unclean. I like the way you brought that out too. Um, you know, I, I think what the biggest problem today is, and I'm going to say it with Black Christians, is that they believe they're Gentiles and they believe these law, statutes, and commandments only apply to the Israelites. And it's hard to get them to understand that, no, it wasn't just for the Israelites. We can go back to like you did in Genesis and see that they still kept uh, the clean and the unclean and, and, and how Cain got, got uh, punished for murder, um, you know, and, and, and how Kawa and Adam got punished for being disobedient to the Most High's commands. And so it's not just Israel. Israel, the Most High just made Israel swear to upkeep those, those laws, statutes, and commandments that was already present in the earth. So um, total, total lesson, and I think if if we kind of look at showing these Gentile thinking um, Christians that that um, even if you don't believe you're you're Israel, if you really understood scriptures and go back to the Old Testament, which they don't like to, you'll see that it didn't just apply to Israel because Israel wasn't even around during those times. Hallelujah, Tob lesson. How are you? Praise the Most High. Praise the Most High. Thank you for your words, I came. Thank you for your words. And I, I just, I just uh, like to give all honor and esteem to the Most High for how vivid uh, I feel like the words are uh, coming now and the things that we're seeing, because like I said, so we can't just keep reading the scriptures as a book. I mean, we're reading it so that we can learn and we can grow and we can know what it takes and what we have to do to please the Father and what it feels like sometimes, what it looks like, you know? And I just thank him that we have a Mishpaka, like as Ima already said, we, we've done went over this several times together, together, you know what I'm saying? Um, we went, went, went over these, but it seemed like each year or each time we hit our reset, the Most High reveals more to us to add to our understanding or to encourage us even more. So uh, told off for your words, I came. All right, before we close out, I'll now open the floor to any brothers and sisters um, that have any words. All right, Ms. Dyson, the floor is yours. If you're speaking, you're still muted. Sorry. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. This is the Dala Koti Angelisa, and my daughter, Andrea, is here with me her very first Sabbath and she wanted to share. Shabbat Shalom, Mishkapa. Um, excuse me if I do anything inappropriate as far as like, you know, pronouncing certain things, but I'm just so grateful um, to be a part of this fellowship and I'm so grateful for the knowledge and I am fired up. So I will be back. Thank you all so much. All oh, praises, all praises, all praises. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you on with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And uh, don't, don't worry yourself about if you, you pronounce something a certain way. Hey, we all have to grow. So we're just happy to have you on with us. And I know your mom is probably smiling from ear to ear right now. You probably can't put her teeth in her mouth because I can, I can see her through the screen and she ain't even on the screen, but I already know she's so happy that you're on here with us and we're happy that you're on here with us as well. So may the most I continue to increase in your life and continue to bless you on your walk. Thank you so much. Shashamar. Can I just want to give all praise to the Most High Yah, you know, for, you know, the total blessing, you know, the reading and all the brothers and sisters that are about their points. 
I also want to give praise to the Most High for allowing, you know, the new people to tune in to study with us. Uh, well, two things I got from the lesson was, you know, we talked about, you know, the unclean foods, but I remember one that I was studying, I thought about, you know, the pork, you know, has worms in there. And I was thinking, you know, the Most High tells us not to eat it. You know, we're supposed to obey his words because we love the Most High. And he tells us not to eat it because it harms our body. So not only, you know, are we supposed to obey his word, you know, we understand that, you know, we just obey the word because he says so, but we also can understand that he does it, you know, because he loves us. And I know we touched a bit on the end, but I thought about, you know, how the world benefits from the righteousness of Noah, Noah, and also, you know, the blessings of Abraham. So that's something you know, that stuck with me. I was meditating on because I want, you know, people to benefit from my righteousness. As, as you know, I, I benefited from it as well. So I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the most. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm glad you, you tuned in on, the, on on benefit from Abraham as well as Noah, because a lot of us we have that self entitlement of thinking we we deserve something. We don't even understand. We're on borrowed time because it's been promised to somebody else. But, if we don't get it together for ourselves, you know, and we should be wanting to, like you say, um, living so to a way that our works and our service to Yah, you know, is able to be a blessing to someone else as our forefathers was a blessing to us. So, total for your words, Don. All right, is there anybody else before we get ready to close out? All right. Oh, there was one other thing about the pig. They Come could on. eat every part of the human body except for the teeth. <laughs> was it you want to eat everything but the teeth <laughs> yeah <con. laughs> all right total for that and they can also be bitten by poisonous snakes and don't die so con all right is there anyone else all right well mr Kyle, we enjoyed it we enjoyed it as always i give all honest theme to the most high yeah um tonight uh, as i came since you didn't get to do your your, your tefla in i'll let you do the uh, closing tefla since you didn't get to do the opening tefla as i came if you don't mind i'll let you do the closing tefla um maria never mind never mind um hallelujah Barakatha yahweh malak malam that is blessed are you yahweh king everlasting king of this universe we come to you now, Abba Yah, at the end of this study, saying, Dawa da Reba, Abba, Toda Reba, Abba. Thank you so much, Father, for your Ruach Hapadash leading us in the truth and understanding of your set apart word and blessing More Samak, the shepherd that you put over your flock, Abba Yah, that your Ruach inspired to bring this lesson out vivid and clear. And all that edified your word, Abba Yah, in the comments. And Abba Yah, we just ask that on tomorrow, on your Shabbat day, that you bless us with your Ruach HaKadosh Abba Yah. Give us shalom. Inspire those that will be teaching Abba Yah. And any and everyone that will be traveling in to Come together, Abba Yah, on your set apart day as you commanded. Bless them with travel mercies, Abba Yah. Put your hedge of protection around them. Deliver them to their Knessets, to their meetings, Abba Yah, to their gatherings safely. Bless their convocations, Abba Yah, with your Ruach HaKadash. Give them shalom. And Abba Yah, we just ask that for our brothers and sisters over in the islands, Abba Yah, the Caribbean, that you put your hedge of protection around those, Abba Yah, that are trying with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their might to walk in all your ways, Abba Yah, to be a light unto your kingdom, that you put your hedge of protection around them, Abba Yah, that you send your Malachim to protect them, Abba Yah. And those that have 
been affected, Abba Yah, that we have even in our Knesset, in our Mishpaka, that you give them shalom, Abba Yah, give them understanding. And we just ask, Abba Yah, that you give those in Uvalde, in Texas, Abba Yah, that have just gone through a tragedy with the Yaladim, that you give them shalom, Abba Yah, comfort them, give them understanding. And all your children, Abba Yah, that are waking up and are dedicated, Abba Yah, zealous to return back to the law, statutes, and commandments that you blessed us with throughout the four corners of the earth, Abba Yah. Bless them with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Strengthen their faith, Abba Yah, that they may be able to endure all of us that are dedicated, Abba Yah, to returning back to you. Strengthen our faith, Abba Yah. Continue to peel the scales off our eyes, Abba Yah. Continue to feed us the heritage of Yaquab, Jacob, our forefather. Continue to let your message jump out of this book, Abba Yah, this ruach that you left us, and that we may be able to receive it, Abba Yah, and walk in it. We are always grateful, Abba Yah, for the blessings that you bestow upon us every minute, every hour, every day, Shabbat to Shabbat, feast day to feast day. We say, Halal Yah, Hallelujah, Toda Reba, Abba. Thank you so much, Father. And in all things, Tob and Ra, everything good and bad, in every situation, we will give you thanks, Toda Reba, Abba for the experience. Blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh, and blessed is he that comes in your name, Yahweh. Hallelujah, aman wa aman. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. Thank you for that prayer, Zakeen. Thank you for that prayer. Um, uh, Mishpaka, just wanna uh, just be obedient to what I feel on my heart. Uh, just really realize the world is changing in a very rapid manner and it's time for us to walk with Elohim. Um, there's a lot of tragedies happen. There's other pandemics and things that's probably about to happen. We see the monkeypox, it's all these things. But when you're going out about your daily goings, watch everything, be circumspect. Don't just be talking on your phones and not paying attention. You see though, what happened to the people at the grocery store. I mean, just be on guard, be, we gotta be prayed up, but we still got faith without works is dead being alone. Be alert, watch everything, be careful um, and give the eye thanks every time you make it back home, you know, because it's, it's getting real out here. Um, with the shooting in Texas, um, the, the, uh, some of the children that got killed in the shooting in Texas, these things are starting to hit a little closer to when I say closer to home, like you start to now be in the know of someone that knows someone that was, it's not just something that's on the news anymore. Like there's uh, some of our Facebook friends that though, the, though the, the children and their parents might not be in the walk, there are relatives that's in the walk that knew some of those children that lost their life. So this stuff is getting closer and closer. It's getting worse and worse. And that's why, you know, one of the highlights I want us to look at was what they went through on that art. We have to be prepared to come out of our comfort zone, if that's what y'all calls us out of, to survive. So I'm not trying to preach fear. I'm trying to preach awareness or encourage awareness and just understanding what our forefathers went through before they walked into their rest. So just just, just be getting yourself prepared physically, spiritually, and mentally, Mishpaka. I love you all. I'm going to say a and shalom on that note. Hab and shalom I look forward to um, in the morning. Hab and shalom. Have a